start this morning by uh, just mentioning to you that as I was preparing um, the message this morning, I believe that, that the Holy Spirit um, just revealed to me what a, a, a marvellous um, privilege it is to share the Word of God with so many people. There must be, what, 50, 60 of you here this morning. And I was really humbled, actually, when the Spirit revealed this to me, because sometimes when you, when you preach, and if you haven't had an opportunity to do that, you won't probably understand this, but sometimes you, you feel it's a bit more of a burden than it is a blessing, mm. because you have to do all the research, and you, you, you know, you, your, your nerves and your stomach and so forth, and you start to get very anxious about the whole thing. I'm sure those of us, Tony, you would say, wouldn't you, that it becomes quite a stressful thing. But the Holy Spirit just calmed me this morning, and he said, you know what, it's a blessing, mm. it's a privilege that you're being given to be able to share the word of God. And so I'll bring the message to you this morning under the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I believe. I'll bring you the message this morning that the, the Holy Spirit will use my voice and will open your ears so that you may hear what he has to say to you. Tony's already mentioned this morning that we're on a journey and that we certainly are. And what I wanted to share with you this morning is the journey of Peter. You'll all be, I guess, in some way or another, be familiar with who Peter was. He was a disciple, and he was also an apostle. So he had quite a journey uh, with our Lord. I want to start right at the beginning of his first encounter, uh, as recorded in, um, in Luke's Gospel. And if we can just read it uh, to you, it's Luke chapter 5. If you ever sit under this screen here, by the way, um, I sat there a few weeks ago. And I thought, you know what, there must be a holy array around here. <laughs> everyone's eyes are on me. I didn't realise that actually we're looking at the screen and not me. But the reason I share that with you, actually, just to digress, is that you know what, the world's eyes are on us. That's right. The world's eyes are on us, and he, and he just reminded me that you know sometimes we do and behave in the ways that we shouldn't do. And again, this will come to the message again this morning that uh, sometimes we don't do what we're supposed to do, and we get it wrong. But you know, God has got all that in His hands. If we get time, we'll we'll explore that a little bit more. Let's start. In one day, Jesus was standing by the lake of um, Gethsemane uh, with the people crowded around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, and he asked him to put, uh, a little, uh, put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the net for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night, and haven't caught anything. <laughs> but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Mm. When you have done so, they caught so such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. <laughs> Good news. Mm. So they signalled uh, to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. <laughs> when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' at Jesus's knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so when James and John and the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners, then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid, for now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats upon the shore, left everything, and followed him. I'm going to, show, I'm going to put at risk this morning, I'm going to show you my age. Uh, and I hope there's a few of you in the, in, in the congregation here that, that remember this, that the George McRae, Hughes Corporation's people, don't rock the boat. Do you remember the song? Yeah. Yeah. No, good, I'm yeah. glad yeah. 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 The words I'll go and something like, I'm not going to sing it to you, rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. We're um, on a journey of love and devotion in our boats and so forth and so on. And um, what I want to just draw out of this this morning is, you know, that, that uh, something so simple as a boat here, Jesus seizes the opportunity to, uh, to, to speak to the people from the closest thing to him. And it's interesting, isn't it, that this boat is the means of a man's livelihood, Peter in this case. And I'll put it to you this morning that, you know, sometimes we need to allow Jesus into our boats. Mm. And we might be a bit afraid about that because we don't really like our boats rot, do we? <laughs> You know, your boat is going to be the office that you work in. If you're a taxi driver, it'll be your taxi. If you're a lorry driver, it'll be the cab of your lorry. 
If you have a house, why would it be into your home for praise the Lord? Actually, for all of us, it's into our homes. But what this passage teaches us, I believe, unless we let Jesus in, we won't see the miracles. See, Jesus performed the miracle in the very vessel that he announced the word from. Isn't that good news this morning? That if you allow God, the Holy Spirit, into your vessel, into your life, he will use that to pronounce the good news message. In this case, it was fish. But you know, he draws the analogy, doesn't he, quite at the end there. He says, I am going to make you fishers of men. And he's saying the same message to us today, I believe. I will make you fishers of men. Allow me in. Allow me into your boats. Yes, it will be a little rocky, as we'll learn later on. It'll be a bit turbulent. You'll go through the storms. But if you want to see the miracles of our Lord God in your life, then allow him into your boat. Because if you don't, you won't. If you don't, you won't. There's some of you here this morning, probably, who haven't actually had that opportunity yet to meet with Jesus. You know what? We all meet with Jesus in the same way. Just like Peter. See, what Peter confesses here in his encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ is who he is. I am a sinful man. And he recognises who Jesus is, Lord. And he falls at his feet. Go away from me, for I am a sinful man. What a natural reaction that would be. A natural reaction for any one of us who, when we reflect on our lives, realise that we don't come up to the measure. That actually we fall short of the glory of God, as it were. And I guess that there are millions and millions of people in this world who don't quite know what they're going, their response will be when they meet with Jesus, because indeed they will. Is there something certain in this world that I can share with you this morning is this, that when you die you'll meet with Jesus. Amen. Each one of us. That's right. And you know what, we can do that today. We can meet with the Lord today before we die, <laughs> if we want to. That's right. Fall on our knees and acknowledge who we are. And then allow him. Because Jesus' response was not a retribution. It wasn't a rebuke. What does he say? Do not be afraid. What an embrace that is. Do not be afraid. In other words, come to me. Come to me and and, and I'll change your life for you. And of course you see that Peter does that, doesn't he? He accepts the invitation of salvation. And if you haven't met Jesus this morning, then... Don't allow this moment to pass by. Don't allow the boat to go off that has the the Lord in it without you falling to his knees and confessing your sin and receiving salvation. Because it is available today just as it was 2,000 years ago when Peter met with Jesus. And you're no different to Peter. You have the same calling on your life as Peter had. God has destined you for work just like he destined Peter. He has purpose for you in your life just like he had purpose for Peter. He wants you to be the Peters of today. That's right. Each one of you, deadhead you, <laughs> if I can put it that way. You are special in God's sight. God has purpose for your lives. Right in the boat that you are in today. Right in your workplace. Right in your home. Right in the cab of your lorry. Right in the cab of your taxi. Or whatever it is that you're involved in. God wants to be involved in too. We've heard that this morning. That God wants to be on the journey with you. He's not an absent God. He's not asleep. He's awake. And he's full of energy. And he's full of power. He wants to share that power with you this morning. He wants to set you free. He wants you to fly as high as the eagles. He wants you to rise up as people. And start making your claim in this world. For what he has purposed you for. Praise God. There's a lot to talk about this morning, and I'm out of breath already. (laughs) But I will try and keep it short. So Peter finds himself on a journey with our Lord. Is it plain sailing? Not at all. And if you read your notes, you'll see that there's, I've put a few examples in there, but I'll put a couple of others too. If we could turn to Mark chapter 4, verse 35. We see... That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side, leave the crowd behind him. They took him alone, uh, along, just as he was in the boat. He has a fascination with boats, our Lord. <laughs> it's a good job he does. There was also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. 
Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? <coughs> he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Uh, they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the winds and the waves don't bite him. Storms will come. Difficulties will come. Your faith will be put to the test. I don't, uh, I don't say that with, with any sort of joy, but it's the truth. But you know, God has a remedy, He has a solution. And that is, if you put your faith in Him, He will see you through. As we were worshipping here this morning, the, the Spirit again, I believe, revealed to me that uh, I'm very familiar with the story where Moses is asked to go and, and speak to the Pharaoh about uh, setting his, his children free. Now, I'm sure some of you will be familiar with the story. And uh, Moses is having a dialogue with God. He's saying, you know what, Lord? Don't send me there. Don't send me to my people. They won't believe me for a start. And, and if they do, it's not, never going to come to any good at all. And of course, God says to him, look, Moses, you know, you've got to do as I tell you, really. If you don't. But one of the key things that, that the Lord says, God says to Moses, he says this, he says, your people, my children, as they leave Israel, will be blessed. Sorry, as they leave Egypt, will be blessed by them instead of cursed. And if you read on through the story, that's exactly what happens. They want to curse them, actually. The Egyptians want to curse the Israelites, but they can't. And in fact, as they're leaving out, they can start to bless them. And it just, it just helped me remember this morning that, you know what, God wants to bless us in the times of our difficulties. He wants to bless us in times when it is difficult, when the storm is around us, when we're in that boat, going back to that again, that workplace. Where are we? Chris. <laughs> the workplace that, that is stormy. The workplace that, that is anti-Christ. The workplace that, that doesn't have any regard for a sovereign God. God wants to bless us in that. He wants really for us to be the mouthpiece in that. In the vehicle that God has placed us in. And uh, it's interesting, isn't it, that, that this story follows on. As I say, it almost seems as if Christ has got a fascination for travelling in a boat. But he hasn't really. What he's trying to say to us is, you know what, I use the vehicles by which to, to get you to engage in the things that are around you. Yeah. You see, there's another example of a boat in Mark. Uh, sorry, uh, where are we? Matthew 14. Mm. Uh, Matthew 14. <laughs> During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. A lot of fear going on here, isn't it, guys? <laughs> My word, I suppose I'd be terrified if I saw him walking on the lake. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage in his eye, don't be afraid. <coughs> Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. <laughs> come, he said. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, <laughs> began to sing, cried out, Lord, Save me. It's a familiar, a familiar story, and one I reckon I could repeat throughout my own life. You start something with great intention, and you start on the journey, and then something comes along and it knocks you off your off your off your course, knocks you sideways, causes you to be a little bit diverted. In this case, it was the wind, and of course, the faith that Peter expressed started to wane a little bit, and he sank. But thank God. Jesus reached out and rescued him. Mm. Uh-huh. And that would be my experience, I'm sure it would be yours too. Mm. Okay, I'm going to rush through a little bit quicker now. What I wanted to do is just set the foundation. Here we have a man, just like you and I, mm. comes into a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, gets mm. saved, mm. just like you and I, right. has some experiences in life, just like you and I. Mm. Okay? And we come to the bit now that... Uh, it all going quite well, but there's a turn coming. And this is the story just before Christ is crucified. <laughs> and uh, I won't put it up on the screen, I'll just paraphrase it a little bit for you. But it's the setting of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, and they're sitting down together, and Jesus announces that one will betray him. <laughs> and you can imagine the reaction. In fact, the Bible gives us a little glimpse of the reaction. It says that they're all astonished. 
Mm. And they sort of like, well, it won't be me, will it? And they were looking around at each other. Mm. And uh, the thing that Peter, out of all of the disciples, says to Jesus is this, Lord, I will die mm. before I deny you. Mm. I will die before I deny you. Mm. And you know what, I can hear myself saying that. Mm. I won't deny you, Lord. Send me wherever you like. Mm. I won't deny you. And if you know the story, you know that, of course, they take Jesus off, they uh, sentence him, they crucify him. And just before his crucifixion, Peter's out there standing in the distance, warming himself by a fire. And a servant girl appears, and she says to Peter, weren't you one of those? Weren't you one of those that was with that Jesus? He says, no, it wasn't me. not you on about. In fact, if you read the scripture, it says, she looks him in the face. Mm, mm. Now, let me just take you back a few hours before there, because in fact, in one of the Gospels, it says that when they came to arrest Jesus, mm. he got his sword out mm. and sliced off someone's ear. Mm. Quite a brave man, considering there was an army mm. who'd come to arrest him. So you know what? Peter was right. He gave up his life for, for, for Jesus. Don't have any doubt of that at all. In fact, he demonstrated it in the Garden of Gethsemane. He gave up his life in that physical sense with the sword. Mm. So what had happened between that time and him meeting a servant girl in the courtyard? Bearing in mind, I'll just remind you of this, unlike today, in Jewish culture, a woman was considered not to be a very high-ranking person mm. at all. In fact, they were quite low on the social scale. Mm. They had no authority mm. over a man. In fact, it would be unheard of. Mm. There's women's liberation for you. Mm. But it was, it was unheard of. In fact, without sounding, condescending, if you read the commentaries, it says that a woman was considered to be less than a dog. Mm. Now that would shock you and I, wouldn't it? But that's the culture of the day. So, can you imagine the two se separate scenes here now? Peter faced with an army of men who could kill him. Peter faced with a woman who in the culture was less than a dog, both challenging him. So what was the difference? And I think that this is the difference, see. When Peter was challenged by the woman, there was something in his spirit that he hadn't actually given over yet to God. I don't quite know what it is, but I think it was something deep-rooted into his, who he was, his person. And in fact, that direct confrontation, that face-to-face -face conflict that existed in the courtyard was about him, his person, rather than who he was, was who he was being. In fact, if you do the Freedom in Christ um, uh, series, you'll realise that one of the main topics they put on there is about your identity, mm. who you are. They talk about your projected identity, in other words, the one that you want everyone to see, mm. and your real identity, the one that you really are. Mm. And the question was, was Peter really absolutely, at this point, sold out mm. to his Lord Jesus Christ? Mm. Probably not. Probably not. Mm. And Jesus knew that. Mm. So Jesus uh, is crucified. Peter is absolutely beside himself. The Bible tells us that he goes off and weeps, and he's, uh, I should imagine, a completely destroyed man. He has no uh, real substance left to him. And he can be reflecting back on all the things that he's experienced and thinking, you know, where has all this gone? And then we uh, come to the, the next bit of the story again, where um, he meets Peter uh, again. Uh, John uh, 21, if we've got it. Which is a fascinating bit of scripture. Afterwards, Jesus appears again to his disciples by the Sea of uh, Tiberias. It happened this way Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee. The sons of Zebedee and the two other disciples were together. I'm going out fishing. <laughs> Can you imagine Simon Peter saying this? Told them, and they said, well, we'll go with you. So they went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Does this sound familiar, this story? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it? Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you caught any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Mm -hmm. When they did this, they were unable to haul the nets in because of the large number of fish. Mm -hmm. 
Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard this, he, uh, him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garments around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it. <laughs> well, talk about doing a full circle. <laughs> so cool. But back to, uh, to the fishing experience again. You know what? I get the impression here that sometimes we need to be reminded. We need to be reminded where we come out with it for time, by the way, Jamie. Good. Uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes left? No, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 20 minutes over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 To be reminded. <coughs> and uh, I find this absolutely fascinating story. Absolutely fascinating. I was watching The Voice last night. I don't yeah. know if anybody watched yeah. The Voice. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I suddenly realised that that's us, isn't it? We're sitting in that, that chair. And uh, we have to listen for the voice. We don't get to see. <laughs> we don't get to see until we, we make that decision. Yeah. And again, I would just say to you this morning, you know, if you know the, Lord, the, the voice of our Lord God, and you've turned away from Him, mm. you've gone off. Something's knocked you off course. And you know what? Things will come along and knock you off course, and you start to lose your purpose, and you start to lose where you're going mm. with God. And before you know it, you wake up and you think, you know, what's all this about? Um, you might have it in your heart, you know, this time ten years ago I was, uh, was doing more for God than I'm doing now. What's gone wrong? And the chances are, if you were to analyse that, you find that something, some encounter like the one that Jesus had, but not so profound, has knocked you off course. And you've lost your, your way. Yeah? And just like that, people on that voice, sometimes you have to listen. You know, it fascinates me how they know what they're listening for. There's something specialist and then all of a sudden, bang, the hand goes out and they turn around. And that's, it. that's what it's like for us. Sometimes you have to listen out because there's going to be lots of voices calling for your attention. There's going to be lots of songs sung to you that will be trying to distract you away from the one that, that, that is the most important to you. And that's the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we sing songs in, in Christian churches that, that sing about the, 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 the song, the Father's song. And you know what? The Father sings us a song. He wants us to pay attention. And I will put it to you this morning that if you're at that place, whether you've just received our Lord Jesus Christ into your life, or you did it a number of years ago and you, you're feeling a little bit lost on the way, Listen out in the next 20 minutes or so as we take communion together. Mm. Listen out for the, for the voice the on the shore calling you. Yes. Just like Peter did, because the minute he realised it was Jesus, there was no stopping him. That's he right. jumped out the boat mm. and went to meet his, yeah. his father, cool. sorry, his Lord. Yeah. Went out to meet him. Right. Again, we won't have time just to read the scriptures, but you'll see just shortly after that, Jesus sits down with Peter. And if you're familiar with this, he talks to him and it's called the reinstatement of Peter. And he goes through, do you love me? Yes, you know, you, I love you, Lord, he says, feed my hands. He asks him three times. And on the third one, and this is the turning point, and this is, this is the point, I believe, that transformed Peter's life. His life was transformed on the first encounter out him wrong. Mm. But this is the real turning point. In that last third phrase, he says, Lord, you know everything. That's right. You know everything. That's right. And I will put it to you this morning that sometimes we run away from God and the call of God on our lives mm. because we don't believe that God knows everything. He does. He does. If you're going through a hard time at the moment, I can tell you this this morning, God knows about it. If you have something unresolved in your life, God knows about it. If you have a barrier that's stopping you from moving forward in your life, God knows about it. And what's better than that is God wants to do something about it. He wants to reinstate you. See, Peter was never the same again after his reinstatement. Because he went then from being just Peter the disciple to being Peter the apostle. And that's the journey that God has planned for you. We're all disciples. And you know what? We're all apostles. We're all destined to be apostles. And if you were to go on and read the Acts and all the other accounts in there of what these men and women did in the early church, you'll realise that actually you can't add, think God 
expect the unexpected from God. There's a, and we'll close with this, I think Sally would be pleased. <laughs> There was a song that um, I was brought up with actually as a young man and it speaks to my heart and it's on your sheets actually and I won't read it all but I just want to read the first few lines of it. It says this, don't assume that God's uh, dismissed you out of hand, sorry, uh, 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 right, I'll start again, don't assume that God's dismissed you from his mind, don't assume that God's forgotten to be kind, for no matter what you do, his love still follows you. Don't think that you have left him far behind. Mm. For his love remains the same. He knows you by your name. <coughs> Don't think because you failed him, mm. he despairs. For he gives to those who ask his grace for every task. Right. God's plans for you in love, and he still cares. Yeah. God bless you all. Have a yeah. great week. Thank you. I've got time to come on Thursday. Please come along because I'd love to explore more of this with you. <coughs> and uh, Sally, over to you.